Hello friends, and today's news is that there's a new animation program out called Tahoma. And it's based on the OpenTunes core code with all of its features, but with additional ones and streamlined to have a simpler, cleaner interface. And stay tuned to the end to see what I think of it and if I'll be switching to it. And this program is here thanks to Jeremy Bullock, also known as Turtletooth, who's worked on OpenTunes in the past, but has worked tirelessly building to Homer to add improvements, simplifications, and features to make this version much more user-friendly. So in this video, I want to show first-time users how to use Tahoma, and for those used to OpenTunes, I'll take you through the changes and new features comparing them to OpenTunes, with links to each section in the description below, and now showing in the new YouTube timeline. And if you're new here, my name's Darren, and it's my mission to ensure that you have all the tools you need to follow your passion and learn animation both hand-drawn and stop-motion. So I've got a link to the download site in the description. And just download the zip file from this site. Then unzip it. And the first thing you'll notice after you download to Homer is that you don't install it. It's what they call a portable application. So if you wanted to, you could copy the unzip folder to a USB stick and then plug it into any computer and use it without installing it. But you might find your antivirus software warns you about using it the first time. And on my computer using AVG, I get a warning when I first run and when I first add a new level. So just run the Tahoma exe file and this is what you'll see. First, there's a simpler startup dialog, and you can create a scene in the default sandbox project, but I'd recommend that you always start a new project unless you're sharing drawings between scenes. So just hit the new project button, and then this pop-up, choose a name for your project, so I'll call this to home a demo, and then set the location, and this can be anywhere on your computer. And I'll leave it at documents, so this will create a project folder called Tahoma Demo in my Documents folder. And click OK. And now I've got a project, I can add a scene to it. So I'll enter a name for the scene, and I'll just call it Demo, and set any scene details. And this is a much simpler view than OpenTunes. So you just set the scene size and frame rate, and then I'll tick to autosave every 10 minutes. And I didn't used to use the autosave feature in OpenTunes, because it popped up a dialog when it saved, and that often got in the way. But this has been fixed into Homer, and it doesn't have it. It also saves in the background. So just click Create Scene, and now we've got a scene ready for animating. Okay, so looking at the overall layout, an OpenTunes users will notice that the dark theme is now the default. So we've got a dark background to all of the panels. But you can change this in the preferences if you wish. In the interface section, just change the theme here. But I quite like the dark one. And the next thing you'll notice is all the icons have now been updated and other neat UI changes made that I covered in the last news video, which makes this the first OpenTunes fork to use them. So that's with huge thanks to Canero. And if you choose to use the command bar or the timeline toolbar, and modify which commands are shown, you'll notice that all of the commands now have icons, so you can fit more on this bar. And as you start to use Tahoma, you'll see that the panels are laid out simpler, with better default settings. So you can get to what you need, with the uncommon options hidden, or move to a better location. As a quick example, the rooms are locked from the start, so you can't accidentally drag panels out of their initial positions when trying to resize them. And in fact, all but the viewer panel has their title bar hidden when locked, so you can't drag them from their dock location, but you can still resize them. So to unlock them, click the padlock icon at the top right of the screen, and you'll see the title bars appear, and then you can undock them and drag them around. So 
So when you've finished, click the padlock again, and then your layouts are safe. And there's a smaller selection of rooms into Homer. So at the top right here, you can see these buttons. The first room is the 2D room, and this is for your main drawing and standard 2D animation. And if you're doing traditional animation, this is likely the only room you'll need. Then there's the stop motion room for working on stop motion projects. And this is such a large topic that I'll cover it in more detail in a video in a couple of weeks time. Then the timing room. And this is where you'll adjust the timing of your automated animation and effects. And I'll pop a video insert on screen now so you can see how they look. So the function editor has had a huge overhaul. First, you can double click in the graph window to fit the contents to the window. Each channel is shown in a different color to make them easier to see. And there's larger key handles to make selection and dragging of keys easier to do. And everywhere the animate tool referred to EW for East West and NS for North South, that's now X and Y, with X for left and right and Y for up and down the screen. Much simpler to understand. So back to the rooms, next is the FX room, and that's for setting up your special effects like glows, blurs, colour correction and all the other effects you can add. And finally there's the browser room, and this is for working with your project files. So if we go back to the 2D room, so the viewer here in the centre of the screen is where you'll draw, and for a simpler view this doesn't show the table background. But if you prefer to see it, you can enable it from the View menu. And there's fewer buttons shown on the Viewer toolbar at the bottom here, but you can see the ones you'll use most of the time. But the rest can be shown from this sub-menu on the left-hand side. And keys are now shown as diamonds, instead of a key shape, to match other animation software. And to help with timing, there's now a time indicator to the left of the frame number, showing you the current frames time in the overall animation. So let's start drawing. And we'll do that using the horizontal timeline at the bottom here. There's also a vertical egg sheet, but this isn't shown by default. But if you prefer using it, you can right click on a column header on the left hand side and choose toggle orientation. And this shows the columns moving left to right and the frame numbers moving up and down. So if I right click and choose again toggle orientation, we'll go back to the horizontal timeline. And there's also a useful toolbar that you might like to show by choosing toggle egg sheet toolbar. And then you've got some common functions shown at the top here. So the timeline is where you'll add your drawings and then time them out to show in your animation. And to do that, we need to add some drawings. And drawings are created in a drawing level and to add a level, you just press this button here. And this gives us the options for the drawing level. And there's three types of level. There's a raster level, which is just a standard drawing format. Then a smart raster level, which is a raster format, but each colour can be changed after drawing with it. And you have the option to know which areas are drawn as lines or filled areas. And this is the equivalent to the tunes raster level in OpenTunes. And then there's a vector level, and this allows you to draw with vector lines, which can be manipulated after adding them. So if I choose a smart raster, which is my favourite level type, and also the default to use, and I'll add a name for this level, which is always best to do, and then click OK. So now you can see your first blank drawing on the timeline, ready to draw into. And you can extend it to show this drawing for longer by clicking and then dragging the handle that's to the right. And I won't go through all the drawing tools today, but here's a couple of new features uniquely available in Tahoma. So first, I'll select the brush tool. That's here on the top of the toolbar. And for OpenTunes users, you'll notice that all the tools are shown on the toolbar by default, rather than being hidden when you first start. OK, so then in the simpler palette list on the left here, you can see there's a first fully transparent colour. And this is used as an erase colour. And then there's a black entry. 
and you can't delete either of these two palette entries, so it's always best to create new ones when you start using them. So to the right is an add new style button, so we'll click that. And this copies the last colour that you'd selected. And then you choose a colour from the style editor above. And for OpenTunes users, notice that there's fewer sliders shown by default, but the rest are in this sub-menu if you want to see them. I like using the HSV sliders, that's hue, saturation and value. And the markers to change the colour are now shown slightly larger so they're easier to use. And overall, the whole panel has had an overhaul. So let's add another colour. And notice how the palette list has also got a simpler view. With only the colours page and then the new page button shown at the top of the panel here. So if I click that, I'll get a new page to store some colours in. And I can click the plus button to add a new colour. And then add a new page and then add another new colour. So now it's much easier to organise your colours for different characters. And the other buttons that you might be used to from OpenTunes are shown in the sub-menu at the bottom here or in this bottom toolbar. So choose one of the colours and we can just start drawing. And change the sliders on the options bar at the top of the screen to get the settings that you want. And then to add another frame for your animation, just click on the next blank frame in the timeline to move to it and start drawing again. And you can view your animation by clicking and dragging along the frame numbers. Now one of the first new features of Tahoma is the improvement to add assistance to the brush tool. So if we go to new drawing, and you can now hold modifier keys before you draw to assist with drawing straight lines without changing to the geometric line tool. So you can add them in any direction, or at 90 degree and 45 degree angles, or towards a vanishing point to help with drawing in perspective. And I'll cover all of these in more detail in a video in a week or two. So subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I do. And there's the new multi-arc option in the Geometry Tools options list. And I had a video out about this a couple of weeks ago. And I'll link it in the card above and in the description below. And there's also a lot of small changes that will help you into Homer. And I can't cover all of them here, but do check out the release notes for full details. But here's a few of my favourites. So to create a video file, you use the output settings from the render menu. And the output settings dialog is now much simpler, showing just the features that you need most often. But if you want the extra features, they're in the two extended setting areas. For instance, the shrink option that you might use when sharing animations online is in the camera settings section. And Tahoma comes complete with the version of FFmpeg, which allows creation of animated GIFs and MP4 videos without setting anything else up. And you'll notice that the render option has been changed to save and render. So your scenes will always be saved before rendering to prevent any lost work if the render process goes wrong. And if I change to the Animate tool, you'll notice that pixels are the only supported unit in Tahoma, no more inches and millimetres, which again keeps it simple. And under the viewer, the currently requested FPS playback speed shows as orange if it's not the same as the scene's FPS. And the context menu for this is also shown in orange. So this just highlights that the video file you render will look different to the one in the viewer. And don't forget that the FPS setting used for your render is shown in the scene settings dialog. So change it there. And as I said earlier, there's much more emphasis on stop motion. But I'll have more on this in an upcoming video. So that's a very quick rundown of Tahoma, a new free animation and stop motion program. And if you're new to OpenTunes and Tahoma, 
you can find lots of tutorials that work on both on this channel, so take a look at those. And I'll have more in the coming weeks, so do subscribe to not miss those, especially if you're into stop motion. So will I be saying goodbye to OpenTunes? Well, I won't be abandoning OpenTunes altogether. There's many crossovers between Tahoma and OpenTunes, and right now animation projects built in one of them can be continued in the other. And any bug fixes or useful new features in OpenTunes will be ported to Tahoma. And some may go the other way too. But I definitely will be using Tahoma for my day-to-day -day animation. The interface is just cleaner. The locking and unlocking of panels is quicker. An autosave is less intrusive. And some of the changes will speed up my work. For instance, the changes around the palette and style editor panels for adding new palette entries and managing the pages. And the new extended stop motion features make this an absolute go-to product for stop motion. And the biggest benefit is that you don't install it. So you can download it today and try it out without affecting your current OpenTunes installation. And I strongly recommend that you do and try it out. I think you'll find it a great improvement. So why not give it a try today and let me know in the comments how you like it. So, animation and stop motion with Tahoma, allowing you to get into animation for free. And that's a guarantee.